The um, class of drugs targeting the apoptosis pathway are um, uh, very promising in, uh, in lymphomas and chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Probably the lead compound right now for that is a drug ABT199, or uh, now known as venetoclax. So it's shown impressive single, single agent activity, especially in CLL, that's otherwise resistant to standard therapy, uh, and is also showing acti activity in selected types of non-Hodgkin lymphoma, uh, mantle cell lymphoma being uh, one of those. We know that we can identify these targeted uh, oral agents that can have often impressive activity, but it's certainly not curative, and most patients will have a relatively brief duration of response. So one of the challenges that we've taken up in our work is to look at uh, how best to combine targeted drugs in a rational way, sort of building from preclinical models. Uh, so what we have done is uh, looked at um, uh, what the responses are with ibrutinib in mantle cell lymphoma. Uh, we know that uh, only about two-thirds of patients respond, and it's a minority of patients who get a complete response or a good depth of remission. So we've looked uh, in preclinical models at our center at the University of Virginia at what drugs partner the best, and we found that proteasome inhibitors and ABT199 turned out to be the most synergistic with uh, ibrutinib. Uh, so the deaths that were seen early on with the drug were when uh, it was being used for CLL, so patients with very high tumor burden, lots of circulating cells, and in sort of the traditional phase one dose escalation, uh, some of those patients with high tumor burden who got a higher dose of drug did indeed have severe toxicity and even a couple of deaths from tumor lysis uh, syndrome. So what we're doing with our trial is uh, a, uh, in a phase one trial that really just opened and that's built on the preclinical work I just described, is starting with uh, venetoclax, ABT199, at a low dose and then in a continual reassessment model uh, format, we're phasing in ibrutinib uh, secondly and then we have a dose escalation through that uh, study mechanism. Uh, we've just uh, enrolled literally the first patient, uh, so it's very early on. So right now we're really limiting the trial to patients with mantle cell lymphoma that's been previously treated with rituximab plus chemotherapy. We're not including patients who have already been treated with or failed ibrutinib. Uh, it's possible they could have had other uh, targeted therapeutics, uh, but not ABT or ibrutinib. The take-home message is to uh, 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 understand that while ibrutinib and some of the other targeted uh, B-cell receptor pathway inhibitors have uh, uh, very impressive activity, uh, that we know that we need to build on those either by combining them with immunotherapeutics like abinutuzumab or rituximab, we need to combine them with our chemotherapy regimens, or the so-called novel-novel combinations, such as the trial I just described, where we're putting uh, two drugs together, have different mechanisms of action. We have to be very careful about exploring how to dose and sequence them, and also very careful assessment, of course, as with any phase one uh, trial, to look at uh, uh, toxicity. But I think as we go forward, we're gonna be able to potentially get very deep remissions with that strategy and perhaps allow us to have patients get a defined period of therapy without having to stay on a maintenance regimen for a very long period of time. But those are all questions to be resolved.